HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we have highlights from the 8th grade promotion ceremony. The Hopkinton Public Library celebrated their new Saturday openings. And we have a recap of a week of home games for Ashland Allegiant Baseball. But first, the Board of Selectmen and Planning Board recently voted to fill a vacancy on the Planning Board. Members of the Planning Board and Board of Selectmen voted to fill a vacancy on the Planning Board. Ladies and ask you some questions, ask you to make a statement, and then when we get to voting... Yourself, tell us a little about you and why you were interested in joining the Planning Board. In my professional life, I work in corporate biotech. I manage a cross-functional team of about 25, essentially doing detail-oriented root cause investigation for pharmaceutical failures. Mr. Atwell, I think a lot of people know you from the election, but give us a give us a rundown and where you see yourself fitting in on the planning board. You might regret it someday, I don't know. <laughs> All right, Patrick Atwell. Um, so I moved to this town five years ago, as you guys already know, through uh, my running for selectman. My agenda hasn't changed. You know, I've seen this town grow at a rapid pace, so, you know, that's a concern of mine because we, we need to grow to survive and to sustain. Mr. Benson, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, to some of you, uh, I've never met. Some I've known for 25 years that are uh, like Brendan, uh, known for 25 years. So, um, and I think it's my time, uh, my time to do my part to help the town with future plans. I did want to make a, a remark in Mrs. Dever's benefit, seeing she is not able to be here. Um, I think that were she to rejoin that board at this point in time, it would be a very good stabilizing presence. Okay, so having said that, um, let me start on this side with uh, Mrs. Brooke. That was the vote. The vote is done. Carol DeVerg is yeah. appointed to a term of the planning board expiring at the 2019 annual town election. And may I remind everybody that there is a 2019 annual town election, which is the best way to get on an elected board. The Hopkinton Public Library is excited to announce they are now open to the public Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. They recently held a celebration to welcome the new hours of operation. The Hopkinton Library celebrated their first Saturday open. The library will now be open to the public Saturdays, 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Today's event is just a celebration of finally having the library open for Saturdays in the summer, which is something that families in Hopkinton have been begging for for many years, and we're happy to finally be able to do that. Slowly but surely, we're adding the hours that people have asked for over all the years. Um, I know working families, uh, Saturdays are a big deal for co coming to the library in the midst of all your other errands, and we're happy finally to be able to offer that to them. So we decided that in doing that, we would give a little celebration and just have a little food. There's a treasure hunt that's going to be in collaboration with the library and the Historical Society, I believe it is, and we're going to rededicate the time capsule bench that the 300th committee has given to us. Um, so we'll have some people say a few words about that in a little while. Uh, other than that, uh, we're, just, we're just happy that we're finally here and open on Saturday. So 
this is our very first summer Saturday that we're open. We were very fortunate this year um, in the budget cycle. We heard a lot of demand from town residents for more hours now that we have a beautiful new facility and we were able to get funding for that. So historically we have been closed on Saturdays in the summer um, and that's been a real problem for working parents, you know, people who work in general. Um, you know, having trouble getting to the library on the weekends just for themselves or with kids. So there's been a lot of demand for summer Saturdays and now we will be open the same hours, 10 to 4, as every other Saturday throughout the year, which is very exciting for us. Um, so today we're having a little bit of refreshments for a celebration. Um, we're having a time capsule bench rededication uh, that is now living in the library. And um, there's a historical scavenger hunt that is starting from the building and sort of a drop in basis this morning. So we're trying to keep it fun and, and festive. This is the first time we've been open on a summer Saturday ever, as far as I know. I have you know, not that much knowledge, way, way, way back. But we're very excited to be able to do it. We know that it's been something the community has really wanted. Um, so as part of what we're doing to celebrate today, we have this time capsule bench, which was built as part of the 300th anniversary celebrations for permanent installation in the library. And this is a time capsule, um, and our thought was that it would be hidden in plain view so that people in 50 years would know just where to look so that they can open up um, and see what's in there. It, it, it's one of the things that we did during the um, year of the 300th was that we were able to excavate time capsules that were in the um, cornerstone of what's now the Korean church, and it was really thrilling to open them up, but it was quite a process to dig them out. And so this will be much easier in 25 or 50 years, and um, you know, due to the um, water leaks in Town Hall and this going into storage and the um, construction of the library, this now finally, a couple of years after it was built, has found its home. So it couldn't be more thrilled. Uh, John Foster is um, the local artisan who built the bench for us. And underneath are um, three time capsules, one to be opened in 100 years and two to be opened in 50 years. And they're all labeled. Um, Mike Whalen made a special key for opening them, um, and he sealed them up. And so the key is embedded in the bench as well. So this is locally cut sherry. And um, we milled it up, uh, dried it, and uh, I just, it was an honor for me to do it for the town. I just hope the glue holds. <laughs> A lot of fun, a lot of work for a year, and it's really nice to just um, re remember that today because it's been a little bit of time. So we're so grateful to the library for um, being the keeper of this, and I hope that people will sit on it and enjoy it and crack it open in, um, in about two years. Um, I built this bench uh, in honor of the 300th anniversary uh, for the town of Hopkinton. It is made from uh, local cherry that was cut by Joe Regan, who is a resident here in town. And um, it was a lot of fun. The school year has come and gone, and the Hopkinton eighth grade class recently celebrated their move up to the high school. Here's a look at the promotion ceremony in case you missed it. Good evening, and welcome to our grade eight promotion ceremony. 2018 math award for the orange team goes to Samuel Strache. The 2018 determination and character award for the orange team goes to Paige Marshall. Tonight I feel privileged and honored to acknowledge the achievements of Caitlin Dempsey. The 2018 orange team English award goes to Grace Young. The 2018 orange team history award goes to Gabe O'Brien. The 2017 8th grade Spanish award for Senora Brennan's class goes to Claire Hood. This year's math award goes to Celia Jenkins. The recipient of the 2018 White Team Science Award goes to Tyler Gordon. This year's English award goes to Melanie Cole. I am proud to present this year's White Team History Award to Mr. Harrison Bograd. This year's Foreign Language Award goes to Grace Ford. It is with great honor that I present the Character and Determination Award to Ryan Franklin. It is my pleasure to present this year's White, Term, White Team Determination and Character Award to Ms. Hannah Hutchins. 
I am so very proud to award the 2018 Green Team Science Award to Olivia Ward. I'm proud to present the 2018 Math Award for the Green Team to Sneha Jaswal. So the 2018 Green Team Award goes to Josh Krimgold. The honor of the English Award for the Green Team goes to Owen Keefe. Uh, the Foreign Language Award for French goes to Sean Zaycon. Is this year's recipient of the 2018 Green Team Determination and Character Award, Subanje Shubes Kanal. My award for excellence in physical education goes to Tanisha Rasgor. Uh, this year's Excellence in Physical Education Awards go to Sean Cahill and Sarah Furlong. I'm pleased to give my award to two very talented individuals, Owen Schnorr and Katie Callery. I'd like to give one award to Johanna Nathman. I'd like to also give an award to um, the uh, Wellness Award this year to Adam Huntington. To me, drama is a communal art. This award goes to Sean Walker. I would truly like to thank the entire eighth grade chorus, as well as Luciano Duca and Manny Luce. This year's orchestra awards go to Carly Osman and Sean Thappa. The person that I have chosen for the General Music Award is Katie Scherfius. It is my pleasure to award this year's band awards to Kira Sward and Alan Wang. I am happy to present this word award on behalf of Mrs. Wollinger to Danny Villani. Congratulations to Brendan Regan on a fantastic three years. The 2018 Engineering Award goes to Sophia Luce. The 2018 Media Literacy Award goes to Fiona Medeiros. It's with great pleasure and a great honor that I offer the 2018 Library Award to Mary Billiter. Congratulations, Owen Panos, for being the brightest spotlight student. This year's Best Buddies Award to Chase Dixon. It gives me great pleasure to present this year's Middle School Endeavor Award to Will Amundsen. This year's Shane DeRoche Memorial Award recipient is Vania Gautam. The recipient of the Dave Lacquadera who embodies these qualities is Eldon Rossi. Our school community award goes to Michael Berman. It's my pleasure to give this year's school spirit award to Kelsey Carlson. I'd like to also recognize three students who were the recipients of state level awards handed out earlier this year. Please join me in congratulating Marina Youssef on this wonderful accomplishment. These two students have contributed a great deal to the civic life of Hopkinton Middle School. Congratulations, Celia Jenkins and Will Davies. This year's Principal's Award goes to Grace Young. Tonight we will hear from a few students to tell us about the wisdom that they have gained. One of the most important lessons I have learned is to surround yourself with people who will allow you to be an authentic, true version of yourself. One of the lessons I have ever learned in middle school is to focus on the now instead of focusing on the future or the past. In the course of my middle school career, I have learned many life lessons. Whether it was through the good times or the bad, the last three years have certainly taught me a lot. Not doubt yourself. To stop questioning your actions and to ignore what other people think. The lesson that I learned in my middle school years that I will never forget is the importance of having a growth mindset. Thank you for making HMS a better place during this adventure. Congratulations, class of 2022. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. All right, workshop series in July. We should shoot a promo for it. Yeah, but what's the concept? It has to be cool. Is this cool? Is this cool? Is this cool? This is cool. Week 
six of the Legion baseball season featured a home game every weekday for Ashland Legion baseball. Here's a look at what happened. A whole lot of Ashland Legion baseball took place this past week. And right now we will get you updated on all the action. On Monday, July 9th, 7 and 2 Ashland Legion baseball hosted Natick, bottom of the third. One on, two outs, Lewis Rossi at the plate. Fans are getting a really here. I don't know if that late back call by the uh, 077 bench is just deception as this is driven into center field. That'll drop down. Ben Thomas waved around third. The throw in is not going to be close, and it's 1 0 post 77. An RBI single for Lewis Rossi. My favorite player. I say it every game. Rossi drives in Ben Thomas, and that is all Ashland would need. Post 77 added two more runs at the bottom of the sixth and took the 3 0 shutout win over Natick. Shane Leary went the complete seven inning shutout, striking out three and giving up only three hits. Happy here with head coach of Ashland, Post 77, Derek Johnson. Coach, a terrific performance out there, a great pitching performance by Shane Leary. Uh, he gets the complete game shutout win. Can you talk about? Shane Leary's performance out there today and this team as a whole. Oh, Shane was awesome today. Uh, he pitched against him the first time we played him, did really well. I thought he did a lot better today. Um, you know, it's the second time out starting for us. You could tell the velocity was up there. But just like um, today, you know, our team ERA, we were talking just now that it's a two. Like our pitchers have been, I think there was 14 ground ball outs. Um, a up till now in the season, they don't give up too many fly balls. You know, they keep the ball down, a lot of ground ball outs, and that's what he did today, um, which is huge. It makes it easy for our fielders. We made the plays, and you know, I think he was at maybe under 90 pitches for the whole game, which is you know really efficient. Which you know can't ask for anything better than that. Go a full game, keep it under 100, and a bunch of ground balls. Coach, you have uh, six home games left, two away games, and you're eight and two right now. How does that feel? This team just must be uh, very confident in the talent that's in that in, that's in that dugout. Yeah, no, we're really confident. We feel like we can uh, repeat last year, if not do better. Um, we've talked about, you know, if we don't get back to the state tournament, we'd be underperforming this year. We have the talent that's, if not the same, if not the same, better than last year. Um, you know, we had a good test at the beginning of the season with seven on the road straight, came back out of there, and uh, you know, eight and two, and this is technically our second home game. So, you know, this week will determine how we finish the season, and you know, it's nice to be home, but we gotta capitalize on that. Well, coach, we're looking uh, forward to a fun week of home games. Thanks a bunch. Thank you. All right, Tom Nappy here with Shane Leary. Shane, you win a complete game today, you gave up no runs. Uh, how does it feel to go a complete game uh, shutout against this good Natick lineup? That came into today, seven and four. Feels good. Um, my field backed me up. Uh, my infielders made a bunch of great plays. Uh, that's all I could ask for. Pitch strikes and get get ground balls, and that's how we do it. It's a good game. Yeah, there was a lot of great uh, defensive plays by the infielders, as you mentioned, especially in the second base and shortstop <laughs> area. Uh, can you just uh, talk about uh, Cole Glassburn as well as um, Jackson Hornung's performance out there yeah, today? Cole, Cole was great. Um, it seems like every ball was going to second base today, which I every ball that was hit, I was like, oh, Cole's got it again. But they did a great job, backed me up, and that's all a pitcher can ask for. So great game. And it seems like you guys have a lot of chemistry in there, a lot of new faces from new last faces. year, but it seems like a lot of chemistry. How do you like playing with this group this Love year? It. Uh, this is my first year playing Legion, and I wish I played later, uh, earlier, as I would say. But um, I came onto the team. They welcomed me. A bunch of new guys came on too, and, kind of started from the beginning and now our chemistry's there we're rolling that's all we can ask for all right well hopefully uh, many more games to come and it's certainly good to have you this year congratulations on a great performance out there today thank you appreciate it thank you guys on tuesday july 10th post 77 took on hudson one to one in the top of the sixth carter drummond at the plate for hudson brother waiting on deck and this is up the third base side that's going to get through and Hudson post 100 has a two to one lead. An RBI single for Carter Drummond. Drummond brings in the go ahead run and lifts Hudson to a two to one win. It was a great pitcher's duel between Ashland's Ben Fink and Hudson's Johan Asensio. 
On Wednesday, July 11th, Ashland hosted Newton. Post 77 adds on to their 1-0 lead in the bottom of the second. Line up in the pitch. And this is sent over to left field way deep. And that is going to drop near the wall and get down. Heading over to third is Pesson. Here he comes to score. It is a 4-0 lead for Post 77. And now Thomas advancing to third on the errant throw. And he's safe. Post 77 adds three more in the inning and led 4-0 until the top of the sixth. Newton would drive in three runs in the top of the sixth to make it a 4-3 game. But in the bottom of the inning, Zach Pesson helped put post-77 fans and teammates at ease. And this is going to be hit in the air over to right center. That's going to get down for a base hit. Coming around is Sean Jewett. Another runner being waved around behind him. That's Brad Seymour. Two runs will score, and that's going to be a triple for Zach Pesson. A two RBI triple. And it's a six to three ball game. That coaching from Coach Johnson. Oh, done wonders for the Pesson boy. Two nights in a row, he creams it. A two run triple makes it six to three Ashland. And that's how the score would stay as post 77 improved to nine and three on the season. On Thursday, July 12th, the Ashland Post 77 week at home continued as they took on Waltham. Waltham led 3-1 heading to the bottom of the second, but Post 77 was able to scratch together some runs. No set to deliver. And this is up the middle, and the second baseman going to bobble it. A run comes around to score the throw to first is in time. But the run has scored as Brad Seymour comes around to tie things up at three apiece. It's a piece of this one, and that's going to go over towards the wall. That'll drop right before the wall. One run in. Here comes another run. Hornung is going to be stopped at second, and just like that, post 77 back on top. A two RBI double for Jackson Hornung. Waltham would only score in the first inning as Ashland took the game 14-3. Friday, July 13th, Post 77 took an undefeated 10-0 Lowell. Ashland got the scoring started in the bottom of the first. Ronan Bates hitting a 111 so far on the season, 2 for 18 at the plate. Gets a piece of this one, hit in the air, over to right field, and it is dropped! And the lead runner gonna come around, and now a runner coming in behind him. The throw in is going to be cut off, and then the throw home is in time. Post 77 plates a run, Dom Cavanaugh called out at the plate, but it's one nothing Ashland. Then they added more in the bottom of the second. The opportunity here for Post 77. And he crushes this ball over to left center. That's going to get down for a base hit. One run is in. Here comes Seymour to score. And the runner behind him is going to be stopped at third. It's a 3-0 post-77 lead. A two RBI double for Ben Thomas. Post-77 took the game 3-1 over Lowell. Luke Gustafson went six and two-thirds of shutout baseball, striking out eight. Andrew Sternick recorded the final out as Gustafson reached the pitch count maximum. With the win, Ashland improved to 11-3 overall. Tom Nappy alongside Luke Gustafson, today's winning pitcher. Luke, a tremendous start by you. Six and two-thirds of shutout baseball. How does it feel to have that kind of performance against a great team like Lowell? Uh, it's good. I mean, we wanted to show the other teams in the league that uh, we're uh, – we're the top of this league. Just because they're undefeated doesn't mean they're better than us. Uh, just went out there looking to throw strikes. Uh, let my team make some plays in the field, and uh, that's what we did today. So, You just seem to be feeling it out there today. That curveball looked nasty. Uh, could you just talk about how you felt going into this game? Yeah, I mean, warming up in the bullpen, I could definitely feel it. It was moving a lot. So, uh, you know, I could throw it for strikes. I could throw it 0-2 down low. I was just trying to work it different locations and stuff like that. And uh, felt good early on, so I just kept with it and turned out all right. And some nice plays made, as usual, by the defense. Yep. Uh, can you talk about the guys playing behind you today? Yeah, uh, I mean, when you're pitching and you have the defense that we have behind us, it's, it's much easier. Um, you know, you don't have to strike. You have to try to strike everyone out. You can, um, you know, 
if you're down the count, not necessarily try to come all the way back. Just hit a ground ball because you know you have the defense behind you to make plays. So excited for that. And you guys seem to have a lot of fun playing together. Uh, can you talk about what it's like to play with this group? Yeah, I mean, we definitely have a lot of team chemistry. We're all from, it's different because we're all from different towns. But um, we have a lot of good kids on this team, and we all work together. So uh, it's a lot of fun playing with these guys. All right, well, congratulations on a great performance out there today and looking forward to the rest of the season and hopefully a long postseason. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, July 20th at 5 p.m., local poets and musicians gather to share their music and poetry in a special open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, July 23rd at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, July 25th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a brand new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. And on Thursday, July 26th at 8 p.m., the Hopkinton Community Summer Band performs in this week's edition of Concert on the Common. And on HCAM Ed, the Ashland Legion Baseball vs. Hudson game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website and check out the new Hopkinton Community Calendar, which can be found on our homepage to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.